Good afternoon, Bison fans, and welcome to our first virtual Bucknell basketball luncheon of the 2021 season. My name's Todd Newcomb, and I want to take this opportunity to thank Maddie's Sporthouse Grill in Lewisburg for once again sponsoring this year's luncheon series. Just a reminder, fans, that you can get an exclusive Bucknell basketball t-shirt with a $25 gift card purchase from Maddie's. So please consider helping one of our local and very loyal partners in Maddie's Sporthouse Grill. We've got a great lineup for you today featuring the head coaches from both of our men's and women's programs, as well as a select group of six student athletes. But before we begin with head coach Nathan Davis and our men's program, let me bring you all up to speed on where the program is after two weekends of the 2021 season. The men opened the season with Navy and lost two very tough games and then took on a hot shooting Lafayette squad last weekend and lost a pair of contests to fall to 0-4 thus far. As you may recall, we're in the Central Division this year with Lafayette and Lehigh, so currently in the division we are 0-2. Andrew Funk is currently leading the team in scoring at 13.3 points per game, followed by two new members to the program, junior transfer guard Miles Latimer and freshman center Andre Screen, who are both averaging nine points per game. In fact, Andre was named the Patriot League's Rookie of the Week following his performance in weekend number one against Navy. The Bison will take on rival Lehigh this weekend with a home game on Saturday and then a contest at Stabler Arena on Sunday. The Mountain Hawks are currently one and three and are led by their 6'11 center, Nick Lynch, who's averaging 18.3 points per game and 7.3 rebounds. All that being said, it's time to welcome our men's coach, head coach Nathan Davis to today's program. Thanks for joining us, coach. I've got a few questions Thanks for, for me, you. Thank, Thanks for yeah. everyone being on with us today too. So obviously an 0-4 starts not what the team wanted, but with the exception of last Saturday, we've been right in every game, three of the four games. What are some of the positives that you've taken away from the first four games that could be sources of confidence to, for the guys to get over the hump this week? Well, I think the big thing is when we're focused and flying around and playing hard and playing with poise, we're pretty good. Um, the, the takeaways, we have to do that more. I think that we have too many stretches where we're not, where we need to be mentally and physically as far as effort goes. But when we do a good job of that, we can play with anybody and, and beat anybody. So Xander Rice is coming off his best college game with 23 points no turnovers against Lafayette. How, is, how has he progressed as he takes over the lead at point guard? Well, I think he's a little bit indicative of, of everybody right now. I mean, the, you don't want to sit and make excuses, but the reality is, especially with John Meeks being out, is we were really going in with, with, uh, with Andrew Walter, and then we got Miles back this weekend, and obviously Paul Newman is really the only guys that have played heavy minutes of college basketball games, and they hadn't had the opportunity to play non-conference games. Um, and it's just a, it's a different animal than practice. It's a different animal in high school games. And so I think that his kind of, hopefully he'll do it again, but I think that he kind of settled in a little bit on Sunday and was less tentative, played with more force and more poise and was able to, to have a really good game. And I think that the team as a whole did that a little bit on, on Sunday as well. Um, give Lafayette a lot of credit for making some shots. I think that's what we need to continue doing going forward is to play with more confidence, play with more purpose, play with more poise. And that's what, that's what Xander did. So you mentioned last Sunday versus the Saturday contest. Um, how much w was the team able to take from, from what you said to them following the game on Saturday and, and make those adjustments and come out and play a much better focused game on Sunday against Lafayette? Well, I think it's everyone. I think that obviously the coaching staff we were on, but I also think our leadership was, everyone was embarrassed by our performance on Saturday. And I thought that we came back and showed a lot of pride. Um, like I said, Lafayette on Sunday, I give them a lot of credit. I think that that was the first game that we actually got beat by some of them in plays. Um, there were certainly some things we could have done better. We had a chance when we started missing shots, but I think they made a lot of a lot of tough shots and made a lot of plays to win the game. Unlike the games before, where I felt like we shot ourselves in the foot and really him get really hurt our chances to win. So fans have gotten their first look at Miles Latimer. What attributes do you think Miles brings to the program? <laughs> I mean, obviously, he's a very skilled, skilled guy. We recruited him out of high school. And he chose to go to Stony Brook, um, and certainly you were free to do what you want to do. But I think he saw the light and came back to us. Um, the, I think on top of obviously being able to shoot and and handle on those things and defend, I think the biggest attribute he brings is a 
physicality and toughness and effort that we need to have to be successful. Um, I mean, one of the plays that stands out for me this weekend was on Saturday. And again, we weren't obviously playing very well. He took a shot from the left wing and ran it down at half court on the right side. And, and if we can get effort like that out of everybody, we've got a chance. So the team's been struggling a little bit from three point range in the first four games. Is it a matter of not getting good shots or at this point of the shots just not falling? I think it's the, the, the more the former than the latter. I think it's more, especially in the first three games of, of taking a lot of tough ones and good ones. And I think that carries over when you're not seeing it go in, you get a little less confidence. So when you do get good ones, they tend not to go in as well either. I thought that on Sunday, we got a lot better ones because of the way we played and we made more. And I think that so much of it is us learning to play inside out as opposed to outside in, which I thought we were doing too much of in the first really three games. And I thought Sunday we got back to playing a lot more inside out and it, it showed offensively how much more effective we were. So we've got Lehigh coming up and Bucknell and Lehigh have had traditionally some really great battles through the years. What can we expect from the Mountain Hawks this weekend? I think you're going to see a team, obviously, they've lost three in a row. Um, they've been in those games and they're going to be desperate, just like we are. And that's the approach we got to take. They have, they really kind of play around three guys with Jameer Wilson, Nick Lynch, and, uh, and uh, Marcus Wilson are kind of their, their three headed monster. Um, they're going to play through and they're physical. Those guys have been around and made plays. And we're going to have to come out and play with a lot of expert and a lot of desperation to give ourselves a chance. But I'm sure. Has all Bucknell Lehigh games it's going to be a hard fought, tight physical battle. Right now. From your perspective, Nate, as the head coach, and and maybe also from your fellow, uh, you know, the assistant coaches on the staff, um, what's been the biggest difference in terms of playing in a gym where there are no fans? You know, honestly, I think it's more different at home than on the road because of our atmosphere. It's just different than everybody else's. And so I think it's more noticeable at home games, um, just a different atmosphere than on the road games. Um, the, is, and as much as when you get on the road with is the absence of fans, it's just the different setup, the different game day protocols. It's just very different from what you're used to. Um, everyone's dealing with it, so we've all got to figure it out. But I just think the overall feel going to the games with the day of when you can arrive, when you can get on the floor, the way the gym's set up, where your meeting rooms are, all that stuff is just very different. And, and for the guys that have been around, it's very different. They're used to, for the freshmen, not so much, but for the guys that have been around college basketball, it's very different. I've got a few questions here from the viewing audience that we're going to turn to. The first one is from James in Virginia. He says, what's your main focus going into Lehigh, and what adjustments are you looking at going into this weekend? Well, I think the first thing is, and it's a lot of what we did going into Sunday, is, is being more alert and attentive to detail uh, across the board and then being more physical offensively playing inside out as opposed to outside in are, are, are the biggest things. I think that physically we're capable of being very good, um, but we got to put it all together and it's, it's never easy, uh, but we've taken it in the right direction. Our next one is from actually two different folks who asked the same question, Mike in Connecticut and Roger in Easton. Can you give us an update on John Meeks? John Meeks has returned to practice as of yesterday. Um, as long as there are no setbacks, he will play this weekend. Outstanding. And our last one from the audience is from Amy in Texas. How has the pandemic impacted how you go about recruiting? You know, it's that's one of the areas that's had the biggest impact. Uh, I think that fortunately we and our staff, the staff have done a great job in the, in the season last year of getting ahead of the 2021 recruiting class and uh, seeing a lot of guys in person because really most of these place in for the head coach, you get some of it during the year, but most of it takes place in April and summer. And honestly, we couldn't go anywhere. So had to rely a lot on the assistants and what they had seen um, as far as guys in person, do a lot with film, a lot of Zoom meetings like everyone's doing. It did seem like I was doing four or five recruiting Zooms a day throughout the summer. Um, but fortunately, we were able to get a class that we're very excited about early. And uh, we think all three of those, those guys come in will be able to help us and uh, compete from day one. And then now going into this year, I think it's even more challenging because uh, obviously so many high school seasons have been thrown for a loop. Um, the NCAA has got a dead period going through at least April. So you can't see anyone in person um, until at least sometime in April or May, which will be interesting because I think you can get so much off video, but it's all—it's not always easy to tell the competition level. Great feel for the athleticism. You can see some skill level and things like that, but it's harder to get a, a feel for their, their athleticism and, uh, and speed 
and strength on on video as it is in person. So so sorting through that and figuring out those things will be uh, will be a big part moving forward in the class of 2022. Well, Coach, we really appreciate your time today, and we wish you and the team the best of luck at Le against Lehigh this weekend and moving ahead throughout the season. Folks, thank you to Nathan Davis, the head coach of the program. It's time now to welcome this year's junior class to the show, a trio of guards in Andrew Funk, Walter Ellis, and Miles Latimer. Good afternoon, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. All right, Andrew, we're going to begin with you. So what have been some of the areas of focus and practice this week as we get ready for Lehigh? Yeah, I mean, I think Coach D said it. Um, you know, we got to play with a lot more purpose. Uh, we especially saw this weekend how good our post guys can be and, and Paul Newman and, and, and Andre Screen. So uh, like you said, we got to play a lot more inside out. And we when we throw it in and we get paint touches, we get a lot of good shots, which uh, I think we realized this weekend. So like you said, we got to play with more of a purpose on offense, offensively and, and defensively. So I think that's been a, a big focus so far. You heard me ask coach about the three pointers, not falling. Um, is that something that can be contagious? In other words, can a guy get hot and the whole team feeds off that and others get hot? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a big confidence thing. And, and like Coach D said, when you're not getting the good ones to, to start, uh, you know, it makes the, the good ones a little bit tougher to make. So uh, I definitely think seeing that those first couple fall, if it's yourself, if, if it's your teammates, you know, is, is a big confidence boost for the whole team. So um, and I think that's going to start coming in. I mean, we've, we've gone through a rough stretch these first couple of weekends, but I mean, we're, we're way too talented, way too good. And we've worked way too hard for, for it to, you know, sustain that way. So. So in, in, let's elaborate on the uh, inside out um, play that coach and you both uh, talked about. In addition to that, how much of it is on you as the shooting guards to work to get open shots? Oh, yeah, no, it, it's just as much, uh, you know, us getting the ball into the bigs and the big kicking it, kicking it, kicking it back out, you know, uh, as it is, you know, on, on anyone. So I, I think it's, you know, on everyone as working as, you know, a cohesive five to to work together to get open shots and, and playing together, and, you know, making the next pass if you don't have anything there and, and trusting the guys around you. So, no, it's definitely it, it's on, you know, everyone as, as a whole to, to get the good shots. Absolutely. I'm curious to get your thoughts as well. Uh, obviously, I asked Coach what it's like to play in a gym without the fans. What's it like from a player standpoint? How different has it been this year, and how hard is it to adjust to that? Yeah, you know, it, it is weird. Um, you know, you, you hear you know the automated fan noise sometimes, and and the different sounds, and kind of an empty gym. But uh, you know, for me personally, you know, I think I think it's just been easier to kind of lock into to games, and I, I'm usually one that doesn't you know, pay too much attention to the crowd noise to begin with, but it's noticeable. But, uh, you know, I think for other guys around us, you know, we're, we're really locked into what we have to do and we're hearing everything on the court. We're hearing, we're hearing each other. We're talking to each other. We're hearing our coaches on the sidelines. So, uh, you know, obviously it comes with its pros and cons and, and it's difficult to adjust to, but uh, you know, it hasn't been too bad so far. So as Bucknell basketball fans, we're not sad that we don't have to play against your brother anymore. <laughs> As a basketball fan in general, he was a pleasure to watch. So can you give us an update on what Tommy's doing now? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, me too. I'm, I'm pretty glad I don't have to play against him anymore either. But uh, he actually, uh, he was home for the new year and then he's actually down in Oklahoma now. He's going to do a couple weeks of training there and then he goes uh, down to Texas where he's going to be stationed for a couple months. So I've been in contact with him. He's kind of just gotten down there. He's going through the whole testing and quarantining period right now before he really gets on his feet. But uh, he's doing well. All right. Well, he had a great career at Army and and us as Bucknell fans, we certainly wish him the best of luck in, in whatever he does moving forward. I've got an audience question now for you. This is from Dick in Milton. How has it been being on campus with no other students around and no fans in Soika? Um, it's difficult. I won't lie. Um, you know, it, 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 everything these past couple of months has been unexpected and kind of taken day by day, which, you know, the biggest thing that I've taken away is, uh, you know, we have each other, you know, our teammates and, and we got to be there for each other. And um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, we don't know what each other are necessarily going through every day. So, you know, we got to be able to reach out and we got to be as close with each other as we are with anyone. So uh, I've definitely, you know, taken that very seriously. And um, yeah, so it, it's been difficult. But uh, I, like I said, we're, we're a very close knit group and I think that's made it a lot easier. Well, thanks for your time today, Andrew, and good luck this weekend against Lehigh.
Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, let's bring on Walter Ellis. Walter, thanks for being here today. I appreciate you having me. So obviously some tough results to start the season, but give us a sense of where the team is mentally right now with another big rival coming up this weekend. Uh, I think with how, the, with how everything's structured, playing back-to-backs every weekend, from one standpoint, it kind of just stinks because you have to play two games in such a short time period. But uh, from from another standpoint, it also gives you a whole week to kind of lock into what you need to do for the weekend. So I think obviously coming off of four losses, we're, we're really excited to get on the court this weekend to kind of show. I think last week we showed some really good strides, especially on Sunday. Um, obviously not getting the win, but um, yeah, just more so from offensive flow and a defensive confidence perspective, I think we're heading in the right direction. But um, especially coming into Lehigh this week, a big rival. So, um, no, I was just trying to get after him and, um, yeah, hopefully come out a win this weekend. You gave me a perfect segue into my next question. You mentioned the Sunday game against Lafayette where the team shot 51% against the Leopards. Do you feel that you've got a little bit of that offensive flow back after a couple games struggling to score? Yeah, I think it's more so just from a confidence perspective. I think in the first couple of games, we were kind of just tentative on offense and we were kind of – letting the game come to us instead of kind of going and trying to attack it for not even really for ourselves, but even just for our teammates. Um, I think Funk said this earlier, but um, especially on Sunday, I think we get to a really good flow, getting it into our big men and then um, having them kick it out and then us maybe driving and kicking it to the next person, having them drive. I think it's a lot of stuff like that when we're getting the ball in the paint, playing inside out. I think it just helps us get into a better group on offense just because we're getting good shots early and um, just down the stretch, I think over the course of the game, when you get those good shots early, you kind of get your confidence going and gets the field going for the rest of the game. So I think as we do more of that, I think we'll just start shooting better and better from three. But um, yeah, no, so that's that's one of the things we've been working on a lot as a team, so. So same question I've asked Andrew and coach about playing in an arena without fans, other than the fact that you, you get to see your family for a brief second during the introductions each game. Um, talk about playing with no fans and, and maybe if you can highlight what has that done, what has that done for communication among you on the court? Has it actually made it easier for you guys to communicate with each other? I think from one standpoint, I, I'm a little bit different than Funk is. The, I, I know Funk doesn't really pay attention much to like the crowd and stuff like that. But I think for me, especially coming from Indiana with like like huge high school gyms and things like that, like I've almost learned to like let that not not in a negative way, but really kind of like get my energy going and things like that. So I think for me, it's been a little bit of an adjustment, kind of playing with with none of that kind of surrounding energy and learning to kind of how to manifest it between myself and my teammates and things like that. But from a communication standpoint, it's been really good just because you don't have to be yelling over however many fans in the gym, you can kind of just talk to your teammates in the half court and then you can hear stuff very well from the bench coming too. So I think from a communication standpoint, it makes it really easy because even sometimes from the bench when we're on the opposite end, we can still hear what our coaches are saying and what some of the guys on our bench are saying, just because, I mean, especially coming from the bench because they just have such a different view of the game than being on the court, being able to communicate from long distances like that, that we usually don't get in normal gym situations. I think it's, we, we've learned to kind of capitalize off of that. So tell us what you're studying at Bucknell and how has the ac- academic side been different this year due to the pandemic? Uh, I'm a psychology major and I also have a double minor in religious studies and economics. But um, I think a, a lot of the stuff for me, like all, all my classes last semester were online. And I think for me at this point, especially with all the COVID protocol and things like that, I think it actually helps me a lot just because I don't really have to worry about those interactions outside of really my where I live and then being at the gym and things like that. So I think I think it's been really beneficial for me. I know some guys are a little bit, they kind of like the social interaction that comes with having class. But um, I think at this point in my career, I kind of learned to kind of enjoy that just because I don't really have to go out of my way to go to class or anything like that. I can just do it on my computer. And especially being um, a junior now, a lot of the stuff is like reading material and things like that. So it's not really like, I'm, I don't really feel like I'm missing out on a lot um, from not being in a classroom. So um, I think it's been good for me personally. And um, coming next semester, I only have one class that's in person and that's only one day a week. So um, I think for me, that's gonna be really good for me again, especially it just kind of opens up more time for me to be on more of a routine schedule with my workouts outside of like practices and lifts and things like that. So I, I've kind of learned to enjoy it. Walter, always good to talk with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I hope the Bison get it going against the Mountain Hawks. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. All right. And finally, let's bring on Miles Latimer. Miles, welcome. Thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. Appreciate it. So most of our fans haven't really gotten to know you just yet. I mean, obviously, they can't see you in person in the arena. So give us a quick synopsis of your background, maybe where you grew up, your family, how you developed as a basketball player. 
Okay, uh, so uh, I'm from Ashburn, Virginia, uh, around like 45 minutes outside of uh, DC. And so just grew up playing basketball in like the whole DC area. So if, if anybody knows anything about basketball, you know that like the, we call it, we call it the DMV, uh, DC, Maryland uh, and Virginia. Like that area of basketball is just, there's so many just high level players that come out of that area. So uh, we, I, Walter and I talk, talk about this a lot, just uh, whenever we watch games, when we're watching TV, seeing all the guys that we know that we've played throughout the years, stuff like that. That's where I'm, that's where I come from. That's kind of my basketball background. Uh, Paul the Sixth Catholic High School. Uh, went to Stony Brook for my first two years. Uh, had a had a good had a good two years, but uh, felt like I needed to make a change. It was a tough decision, but I felt like I made the right one and came here. Buck no. So that's again a perfect segue to my next question. Both you and Coach mentioned that you attended Stony Brook before coming to the Bison, but as I understand the story, you were considering Bucknell from the beginning and then went to Stony Brook. Now, was Bucknell always on your mind when you came time to transfer? So, um, yeah, so to answer the first part of that question, uh, Stony Brook and Bucknell were, it was one and one A in terms of my recruiting. Uh, Cause I had, I, had a, I had a good amount of offers um, after my junior year uh, during the summer. And I was kind of, uh, I, was, I wasn't like tired of the process, but I was, I was ready to make a decision. And, um, and so it was Bucknell and Stony Brook. Um, so maybe made the wrong decision at first, but I came here. So, <laughs> um, and then, uh, uh, can you say the uh, second half of your question again? No, you, a you answered it well. Yeah, and we're happy that you decided to come to Bucknell. We're, we're more than uh, happy to have you here now. So with that in mind, obviously the fall semester looked a bit, a bit different in terms of academics, social life, basketball, et cetera. But what's been your first impressions of Bucknell? Uh, well, I actually really love the size. Um, I love how small it is because um, Stony Brook, it's, it, it's a pretty big campus, but it's like a circle. So it's kind of feels, uh, it feels very secluded. So I like how um, downtown, like the downtown part of campus is very close. And so it feels like, it kind of feels like a college town more than Stony Brook did. I, I, I really like that. But um uh, my perspective is very different because I've only been here while there's been the coronavirus. So I haven't experienced like normal campus. So for right now, I mean, I just love the size because it feels very small and feels very, you can just be on your own and it's very calm. But I'm very excited to see after the virus and stuff goes away. Uh, so, you we know, all are. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think are some things that you can bring to the basketball program? Uh, one is just, uh, one, one is experience, honestly, uh, being a two year, well, one and a half year starter, um, playing 30 minutes a game, basically for my whole college career. I've been through every type of game situation. Like my very first college game, I was down 22, nothing. And we came back and won in overtime. So, I mean, I've been through every situation. So I just bring experience, just try to just teach everybody what I know, like no matter if they're a senior, no matter if freshman, like I just want to just, if I can help anybody, I want to help us win. That's honestly what I want to do, just win. Well, Miles, welcome once again to the Bucknell family and we wish you the best of luck this weekend and beyond. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So before we get set to welcome in the head coach of the women's program, Trevor Woodruff, let me provide some information on where the women's program is at this stage. The women are currently 4-0 after dominating their first two opponents of the season. After a last second change due to a positive test in the women's program at Navy, the ladies took on Loyola during the first week and won both games by an average margin of victory of 22 points. The team then turned its sights on Lafayette last weekend, a fellow Central Division team, and won both those contests by an average margin of victory of 32 points. While there's been contribution throughout the lineup, the team's had three players averaging double figures, Taylor O'Brien at 15 points per game, Tessa Brugler at 13 points per game, and Abby Cap at 10.3 points per game. Brugler is leading the team in rebounding at a clip of eight rebounds per game. The long range shot has been a big weapon early on for the Bison, 
they're shooting a higher percentage from beyond the arc than they are from the rest of the floor, 45.5% from three and 43.3% from the field in general. The ladies will face a stiff challenge this weekend when they take on the high scoring and undefeated Lehigh Mountain Hawks. Lehigh tied the Patriot League single game record with 16 threes in a contest last weekend and they're averaging 80.5 points per game this season. All that being said, it's time to welcome our women's head coach, Trevor Woodruff, to today's program. Coach, we want to also congratulate you on your 300th NCAA win and hope that you may have many more here at Bucknell. Thanks, Todd. I, I appreciate that, and uh, I hope the same. All right. So what do you see as the keys to slowing down a 4-0 Lehigh team that's scoring 80 points a game? <laughs> Pray. Maybe. Uh, you know, I... I give them a lot of credit that Lehigh's got a lot of new pieces. Uh, they graduated five or six seniors and to watch what they've done in their first four games uh, has been really impressive. What they've been able to do really a very drastic change in their style of play. Um, you know, just very spread out, very guard oriented and, and really shooting it at the slightest little crack of, of any space they're shooting. It, and so far they've made it. Um, so we're just going to do what we do. You know, I think we try to, to pay the bills with defense, so to speak. Um, I think our, our players would agree with that. It's, it's the first thing we do every day. Uh, we want defense and toughness to be our identity. And I think so far this group has, has been able to do that. So, you know, we dig into the film, we started earlier this morning talking about how we wanted to guard some of their scoring actions. So, I'm confident uh, in our in our ladies that they'll they'll buy in and and they'll be razor sharp when when the time comes. Not that they're not going to get some open looks and make some, but hopefully we can just limit the number of attempts they get. And maybe I should have actually begun with this question first because talk to us about how tough it was the opening week of the season to be preparing for one opponent the entire week. And then literally the day before the game, you find out you're not playing them, but you're playing somebody entirely different. How did you and the staff react to that? And more importantly, maybe how did the team respond to that? So in some ways it was difficult because you didn't have time to prepare for the second opponent, but in some ways it was easier because you didn't have time to prepare. Does that make sense? Like you just throw your hands up and, and, you know, any, any energy wasted on, um, you know, feeling sorry for yourself or, or woe is us. We don't, we don't get to prepare. It was wasted because you just, you couldn't do anything about it. So uh, we spent most of that Friday night, we found out about 8 PM who we would be playing at 2 PM the next day. And so I'm fortunate. I have a great staff, you know, they, they threw their capes on and went to work and uh, you know, worked through most of the night preparing what we could, which was really personnel, uh, players that we knew from the previous season, and then dug into their offensive stuff going back two years to see what was consistent over a two-year span. Regardless who they had, some of those things would be consistent, just that's what they do from year to year, knowing there would be some changes. So that's what we did. The team was really remarkable, and their ability to both um, – switch gears from Navy to Loyola and then even in-game adjustments uh, did a really good job. And I think a lot of that has to do with the veteran nature of our team, um, which has given us, I think, an advantage early on here. Certainly in the first two games that have been played at home in Soika, you, your team has been completely dominant, scoring almost at will and, and you know playing to that home court, so to speak, advantage. But as Coach Davis, and some of the men's players, what it's like playing without fans. What is that like for you and your staff playing without fans, particularly on the women's side where I know, just like the men, uh, Bucknell is, is really well supported at home uh, by their fan base. Yeah, I think we all miss the opportunity to interact uh, with the fans. You know, you have big wins at home. One of the best parts is then, you know, uh, we get to interact with the fans afterward. That part, you kind you miss certainly the energy they bring to the game, um, but I think at this point everybody 
kind of get it. You know, we understand it's not new anymore. It's not going to be an excuse for playing well or poorly. And in some cases, it's even more difficult to communicate. Uh, whereas you might think it's the opposite, but with the mask on and then the piped in noise, some cases it's louder with the piped in noise in, in some gyms than it would be if there are fans there. Um, so the communication, I think, has been a little more difficult without the fans, to be honest with you. But we certainly miss our folks. I, I'm not sure there's a close second in terms of, of um, home court advantage, uh, the atmosphere and environment that fans create. Uh, we're very blessed and we appreciate our, our folks. And I know if anything, when this thing flips and they're back in the gym, they're going to show up quick and loud <laughs> because they'll be ready to go. Well, one of the things that uh, the fan base has not been able to see this year, unless they've caught glimpses of it on the, the camera broadcast is how involved and enthusiastic your bench is. Without the fans to feed off of, how important is it for your bench to stay involved in the game and to give that extra bit of spirit to the team? Well, I think regardless whether they're fans or, or not, um, you you want to be a team, and that requires complete investment and involvement, whether you're on the floor or not. And you know, I think it's normal. You have you know you have players who are starting players, and the bench folks kind of accept that, and they know all right. I'm energy from the bench that's that's part of my role what I really enjoyed in addition to that is when our reserves go in our starters are equally or more enthusiastic which I think does a lot about them uh, talking specifically about the the four seniors and the the two juniors who play most of the minutes you know they set the standard for for the the group and so when that's the standard they set, then everybody else has no other option but to follow along. So it's been great. I've seen some video clips of you know, celebration, enthusiasm from our bench. And, you know, the question at this point in the type of situation that we're in, that positive energy from one player to the other, uh, from starters to bench folks and, and vice versa, it's critical. And I, I couldn't be happier with our group. You, know, you, get, you can get bench warnings, you know, for over celebration. <laughs> I almost think if you don't at least get a warning, you probably weren't enthusiastic enough. <laughs> All right. So what are some things you're looking for the team to improve upon in the coming weeks? Yeah, good question. That's a, that's a daily grind. I think when you're winning, sometimes those are the things that slip through the cracks. And so what we've communicated to our group is that our, our improvement is going to be on the margins. Uh, it's not going to be a case where an individual, player or the the group goes from maybe you know a five on a scale of one to ten to being a nine huge areas of improvement our improvement is going to come in small things done right nine out of ten times instead of seven um, and so that's what we talk about and when we watch film we're very critical of ourselves just in terms of you know well you switch doesn't seem like a big deal but for our group that is a big deal because that's where we'll get better. Instead of missing four switches in a game, we've got to get to the point where we don't miss any. And that, that's really the goal, and that's where our improvement will be. Um, to be specific, I think our communication can always be better. That's something that we always stress. Uh, we've placed a heavy emphasis on ball movement this year. We really don't want the ball to stick offensively in anyone's hands for very long. And I think from weekend one to weekend two, that was probably the biggest area of growth for us was how quickly the ball went from A to B to C and then back around to A again. So through the first four games, players on the team have surprised you the most? You know, I don't know if I've, I've been surprised. Uh, I expected, because there's so many returning pieces and because my expectation for this group is so high to begin with, you know, they probably can't reach my level of expectation for them. And maybe that's creates some frustration at times and for them, like, man, I can never make this guy happy. Um, but I fully expected our, our veteran players to be ready to go day one. They, they felt slighted, what fair or not, that last year ended the way that it did. 
they didn't get that opportunity. I know they were motivated by that. Um, and then, you know, I expected our young folks to take a little bit of time without the summer work, without the preseason games. We were going to throw them in and they were not going to be ready to play. Um, it, if it was that easy, then every freshman would be ready to play. And so I think what has happened so far, other than maybe some of the point spreads, I don't, I don't think we're going to blow people out, but I think in terms of who's done what, to what level, it's, it's been pretty on par with what I expected. So I mentioned earlier, you collected your 300th career win at the NCAA level on Sunday. In what ways have you evolved as a coach throughout <laughs> the years? Well, I used to have cheekbones. I don't know where they are anymore, but uh, I had a buddy who said to me, 300 wins, that's a lot of bus rides. And uh, he's right about that. Um, I, you know, I'd like to think I've gotten better. Um, you know, some of our fans and our players probably think I'm, I'm too emotional, too reactionary uh, at times. I would say just watch some film from 15 years ago and I'm a little kitten compared to that. Um, you know, and still, still obviously, you just wanna be what your team needs you to be. And so that's really my focus in terms of improvement is you know, how can I be better at what they need me to be, not necessarily what I wanna be. Um, you know, I've also now, I spend more time thinking about how can I help my assistants Improve, them, improve themselves? Where can I give them more opportunities to blossom and improve and grow? Um, so there's a lot of ways I think I've, I hope I've gotten better, um, but I'm not sure if I'm the best judge of that. All right, so we've got some questions from the viewing audience for you now. The first one's from Mark in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. He says, your team has unfinished business, but what are you doing to keep your team focused on the task at hand? Yeah, I think he answered, he answered the question himself, really. We don't talk about last year really at all, unless there's a, you know, maybe an example from last year in a given game, how we guarded something that we're going to do it the same way or do it differently or something like that. You know, last year is what it is. It, it was an unbelievable season. Uh, everything kind of came together uh, the way you would hope as a team. And that was all amazing. And then it was a ter you know, an awful ending. So we had both ends of the spectrum, but neither of those things affect how we do things this year. Um, I think our, our ladies have been really mature and understanding of what's in front of us, put the blinders on, control what we can control, and just attack today because that's the only thing we have. We don't know if tomorrow's going to be another practice or not. We hope so, but hopefully our folks were just focused on being their best today. And we'll do wake up tomorrow and do the same. So to answer Mark's question, uh, we don't think at all about last year. Uh, in our mind, it is finished business because there's nothing we can do about it. And so what's all about what can this team do this year in this moment? And that's where the focus is. Okay, the next one is from Raj in Virginia. He says, coming off the injury, how would you say Marley Walls has looked so far in terms of being at full strength? I think in terms of uh, the, the injury itself and, and getting over the injury mentally, I feel like she's in a pretty good place. Um, she's been fearless. You know, I've said it before in multiple interviews that oftentimes the biggest hurdle is the mental hurdle. The doctor says you're physically ready to go, but the doctor has no way of making you ready to go mentally and overcoming maybe some fear. But I haven't seen that from her. She's been really fearless. So uh, that part of it's been great. I think there's been a little bit of rest in terms of just overall game action, but I love how she's competing. I love that she's making shots. Um, so we really don't have any complaints. We feel really confident about our point guard position. We've got some really good players there and, and she's, you know, she's one of them. So we're really happy with, uh, with Marley. Same question here that I asked coach Davis. This is from Amy in Texas. How has the pandemic impacted your recruiting? 
Um, maybe that's the biggest area of impact, you know, just because there's nothing in person. I, I really believe for most people, when they walk on our campus at, at Bucknell, you get a feeling. Um, it's a special place with, with special people. What it can do for young folks in terms of setting them up for future success, you know, is really a leap across compared to other places across the country. And I think you feel that when you when you come here. And so the inability to have folks on campus see not just see the pictures, but actually see it, put your feet on the ground, walk around, meet the people, you know, I think that's made it difficult because that's that to me, along with our players, are the two biggest cells that we have. Who we are and what we are. And, and it's hard to get that on a Zoom call. So it's been challenging. You know, it's not we have three commits for 21. Um, it doesn't surprise me at all that all three of them visited before the pandemic. And so all the other folks that we, you know, were recruiting at that time pre-pandemic, that maybe were planning um, spring visits or winter visits to see a game, that kind of thing, you know, they have not committed because they haven't been able to step foot and, and see and feel and hear all the things that make us uh, what we are, what this place is. So it is what it is. Uh, we really love the three that are incoming. We have one scholarship left and it's very specific what we're looking for. And, and when we find that right person who loves us as much as we love them, then, uh, then that's when we'll be done. Well, coach, we really appreciate you, your time today. Congrats on a great start. And we wish you the best of luck against a tough Lehigh team this weekend. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate you, your efforts, and, and certainly all the Bucknell fans. Uh, appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, we'll hope we keep, keep winning for you guys. All right. It's time now to welcome our three women's players to the show. Senior guard Allie Johnson, senior forward Autumn Seppi, and junior guard Taylor O'Brien. Good afternoon, ladies. Thanks for joining us today. All right, Allie, we're going to get things rolling with you first. All right, I'm ready. That's right. Lead off spot. So <laughs> clicking on offense that has allowed the team to put up so many points early in the season. Um, I think just we are like an older group. We've been playing with each other for forever. So we know each other's strengths and like where to get the ball um, on offense, especially in like big possessions, things like that. And we just love playing with each other. Like, I don't, I think people kind of underestimate like how much chemistry um, is involved when stuff is clicking. Like we have really good chemistry with our group. Like, I think like Autumn gets more excited when she gets an assist versus when she scores, like that type of like love and energy. I think that's really what's contributing a lot to how things are going right now. Yeah, you just alluded to the love and energy of the program. And that's really easy to see as coach and I were just talking about when some of the reserves get into the game and they score a basket, or if it's a first year player and they score their first points in a Bucknell uniform, um, the rest of the team just goes crazy. What, what is that like to be able to support each other and to know you have that support from your teammates? It's really amazing. And it's definitely like started with girls who have graduated years before when like we were freshmen and we wanted to carry on that tradition. Um, and we spend so much time together. We get to know each other really well and seeing our teammates and friends succeed is so exciting. And that's just what makes our program so special. So specifically to you, how has your role changed this year from maybe last season? Um, last season, I kind of had like a transitional role because I started off playing more of a wing spot and had to transition into more of that point guard spot. And this year I'm primarily playing point guard. So I think it's good last year that I got some experience doing that. And then this year continuing to do that. And I think the, a big part of my role is just making sure like everyone's organized on offense and defense, being a good leader, getting the ball where it needs to go in good situations, but still like being a threat myself, like knowing my own strengths. So what do you think allowed you and others to have so much success from beyond the arc last weekend? Um, honestly, on Saturday, Abby was just hot. So we were just getting her the ball like whenever we could. 
Um, and I think that we're getting like great shots. We're not taking contested threes. We're getting wide open threes off of movement, dribble drive, um, post feeds in and out. So they're open shots and that's what we're practicing in practice. Um, and once you get the momentum, we kind of like can feed off of that, feed off each other. So your opponent this weekend has done a lot of damage from long range as well. Uh, what's been the focus this week in practice on, on, on Lehigh's offensive attack? Um, close out number one in film today. We did like hangman of close out to make that an emphasis for this weekend. Um, and then just knowing personnel is really huge for every game, but especially this game, knowing that you're closing out to a shooter every time and being able to guard the ball so they don't get those dribble um, drive opportunities. Well, Allie, thanks a lot for being here today. Good luck this weekend. Hope you guys keep the good start rolling. Thank you. All right, so Autumn, we're gonna to turn to you next. Sounds good. All right, so how's this season been different for you now that you've stepped into a starting role for the Bison? Um, I honestly don't think it's, I mean, it's been a little bit different just being out there at the beginning of the game and knowing that like from the start, like have to bring energy and kind of all work together. But I think overall just, I mean, I feel like just being a senior and, and knowing like we need to kind of come out strong has always kind of been something that's been emphasized like over the couple of years. So I don't think it's been insanely different. I think it's been fun being out there um, with other starters just because I don't know, like AJ was saying, we do have a lot of chemistry together. So it's just honestly really fun. So Allie actually stole one of my questions for you, which is fine. I'm still going to ask it. Um, so in the game, one of the games this past weekend, you had an amazing play in the paint with a crossover dribble, great footwork, and then you dropped it off for an assist. Um, and it's one of those plays where the whole bench got up and was excited about that. Is, is it more indeed more fun for you to, to make a play like that and to score a basket yourself? I think, yeah, definitely. It's just fun. I mean, like those kinds of things, like AJ was saying, like we're just so used to kind of playing together and like, we know where like our players are going to be. So I think it's just like fun to kind of like find people in, in certain places. Like I know a bunch of times, like I like get so excited hitting TO for like the back door cut. Um, so yeah, it's definitely exciting. I, I mean, I get like a lot of excitement just seeing everybody do well. And um, so yeah, definitely. All right. So how's the team culture been different this season with all the changes uh, and, the, and, and Ellie Mack moving on and, and the new, freshmen coming into the program? I mean, there are a lot of changes. I think it's, we've had to rely on each other a lot more than we even have in past years. And I think that there's certain days where a couple of us are down or one person you kind of notice is struggling that day. And it's just kind of being able to notice that, pick each other up and, and find ways to get through the really tough times. I think with COVID especially, it just really hasn't been easy on everybody's mental health and, and just those types of things. But I think that as long as we continue to kind of stick together and, and play for each other, we can have success. And I think you could see that throughout this past weekend, like getting on the court and playing together is, is like the best thing that is going on right now. So it's just definitely like fun to kind of play together and, and yeah. So through four games, in your opinion, what, what's the biggest strength of the team? Hmm, that's a tough one. I think that the biggest strength that we have right now is kind of being able to kind of be flexible and adjust on the fly. Like I know the first weekend that we kind of went through, but like we just made adjustments and we're able to kind of work together and pick each other up. So like, even though we've had a lot of ups and downs this year, we've been very flexible and been able to adapt even when like sometimes it's really hard. And like I said before, the mental aspect is difficult. Like we've kind of just pushed through. And I think that kind of goes into like being flexible and being strong and, and getting through all the tough times together. So I've talked a little bit already today during the luncheon about how different it is without fans in the arena. What, what's your reaction to the new starting lineup introductions with your family? Oh, I love it. I was completely, I didn't know that was happening. So I was really surprised and it's fun to see everybody's families. And um, I mean, like, obviously we didn't get to go home for Christmas or anything. So any kind of time that we get to see our families, it's kind of, it gives you kind of a little bit more motivation knowing they're watching and they have your back. And I'll tell you, your family did it in one take. 
So they did a great job. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. I'm actually shocked. <laughs> All right, so I've got an audience question for you. This is from Dave in Lewisburg. He says, is your ability to draw charges more of an art or a science? I think I've perfected it over the years. I get really excited. I I don't even know. It doesn't even hurt, honestly. I've like kind of got it down. Um, I don't really know what I do. I just do it. It's fun. <laughs> All right. Well, Autumn, thanks so much. And uh, good luck to you and the rest of your teammates this weekend. Thank you. All right, Taylor, let's bring it home with you. So we've got Taylor O'Brien here. How good did it feel to have such a big performance last Sunday? Um. Well, I definitely couldn't have done it without my team. Like, like Autumn was talking about, like the backdoor passes, like I'm not gonna be able to make those without her. Um, just being able to like feed off of the energy and just like be able to be in the right place at the right time. And with a, an, enough good passes, like my teammates are really like helping me a hundred percent of the way. Like, it's not like me doing anything. Like they're making it so easy to score and I'm trying to like, get through our motion and stuff. And they're just so easy to work with, so easy to play with. So it makes it a lot easier. So what do you think is the biggest growth in your game since last season? Um, well, I'm still working on a lot of things um, this year and last year, like just always growing. Um, but I think I've definitely matured with like being calmer with the ball. I'm not gonna say I'm calm with the ball because I get a little, out of control, uh, like I usually do, but um, definitely making the right choices with the ball. I've worked a lot on that and um, being able to like find my teammates when there are open uh, opportunities, like Autumn's talking about all the time with like the little, the little dip off passes, like they're very hard to find, but as you get older, you kind of get to see, and like we've played this um, offense for a little while. So it's kind of like easier to read where people are going to be. And it's just like, so exciting like knowing someone's going to be in a certain spot and you like even if it's like completely behind you like you know they're going to be there and then you like make that pass and they can knock down the buckets like that's really um been exciting to be able to like see that I can see that now so that's really good so with the schedule being completely different this year in terms of league play where you go from weekend to weekend and you have a whole week in between usually we in past years, you have a non or a, a conference game midweek, so you're uh, you're preparing for a different opponent every couple of days. Now you've got a whole week to prepare for an opponent. Is that been an advantage, or does that make it tougher to remain focused on that opponent for that whole week? Well, it definitely lets you know the importance of each person, and you kind of learn the personnel a little more. You learn their offense a little more, just like practicing like the nitty gritty and like getting to know like each particular details of the game so like when it does come game time it's like kind of second nature um it definitely is harder um for our bodies just because like we've never played like back-to-back -back games before and it's definitely like taking a toll but um I do like playing uh back-to-back -back games because like I feel like you get to know the people that you're gonna play and then you like go and actually play them and like oh my gosh I know everything about you now like I think it's exciting and um very different but I like it that being said, let's see how well you know Lehigh. The person you might be matching up against, what's their strength this weekend? We just went over that actually. So uh, this is a quick test. Um, well, basically everyone on the team is able to shoot the ball. So just being able to get out on everyone and take away their three is like kind of what we're, we've been talking about. Um, my girl's a shooter, so just getting out on her. Making gotcha. her put it on the floor. <laughs> so I've asked this question a lot today and I'm going to ask you as well what differences have you noticed playing in Soika without any fans it's a lot harder just because I know that my family's a big like part of my life and they come to every home game that they can even the away ones they like try and make it out to most of them so I know like we have our little signals like on the bench and on the floor like whenever I'm like clearly very frustrated with like how we're playing or whatever like I'll look at my mom and she'll give me like a little signal be like all right you can do it like calm down and that's definitely been hard not having her there and um especially all my parents and grandparents like just seeing all of the people and the the atmosphere of the fans really is brings a lot to the game um like more than the people think so like not seeing those people is really tough but um it's bearable we're getting through it so 
it's new and different and we're all trying to work without it. But um, I think our team's doing pretty well without um, all the fans there. Okay, and finally here, Taylor, I've got an audience question for you. This is from Heather in Lewisburg. And she says, you're also a standout high jumper on the track team. As a two sport athlete, are there skills you use from one sport that help you succeed in the other? And how does that athleticism give you an advantage on the basketball court? Um, I feel like I use my speed to my advantage. I feel like that's kind of where the out of control part of my game comes from, where I'm just very unpredictable. Like even to myself, I'm unpredictable. So it's like, what am I going to do with the ball as soon as I get it? So it's like kind of helps also um, just like jumping in the air to make passes is like kind of, I use kind of use my high jump height so I can like look around while I'm in the air which helps a lot because I usually jump and don't know what to do with the ball but I see my teammates like a little bit easier when I'm up in the air so that helps a lot um I don't know I think it just makes the game a lot easier just like seeing things um just kind of coming with age too like just being able to see better passes um but I don't know um yeah I don't really have anything that's a good answer well, again, thank you, Taylor, uh, for joining us, and good luck this weekend against Lehigh Ladies. Thank you to all of you. Best of luck moving forward. So a special thanks to all of our guests today. We certainly appreciate their time. As a reminder, don't miss out on the opportunity to get your own personalized fan cutout in Soika Pavilion. You can do so by visiting bucknellbison.com today. Well, that's just about wrap up today's luncheon. Our next virtual luncheon is scheduled for Wednesday, February 3rd. Thank you to Jeffrey Campbell, John Terry, Ben Blumenthal, and Jess O'Shaughnessy for their assistance with today's event, and go Bison.